Good afternoon and welcome to our special two hour live coverage of the total solar eclipse. I'm Mark Mulholland. I'm Sabrina Dami. It's the moment the entire capital region has been waiting for for more than a year now. In just over an hour, millions of people will witness the moment of totality when the sun is completely covered by the moon. We have live team coverage from across New York right now. Reed Kisselback and Rachel Tede are directly in the path of totality. Reed reporting for us from Fort Drum. Rachel from Lake Placid. And we also have team coverage across the capital region. Region. Tessa Bentulin is standing by live in downtown Albany right now, right outside the state capitol where people are gathering to catch a glimpse of this phenomenon. And Dan Levy is at Thatcher Park in Voorheesville where people are hoping the wide open skies there will give them a better show. Yeah, Stella Porter is standing by live at Siena College where a watch party is getting underway. And Juanik Martinez is taking to the waters of Lake George's thousands head north to be closer to totality. First, dozens of weather balloons are floating high up in the atmosphere right now now, including balloons launched by a half dozen students from the University of Albany. Yeah, it's very exciting. The group is among 53 teams from 75 institutions selected to participate in this year's balloon launch project that's sponsored by NASA and the National Science Foundation. Let's start our special eclipse coverage right there with meteorologist Reed Kisselback. He is with them right now in Fort Drum, about 30 minutes outside Watertown. Hey, Reed. Hey, Sabrina, Mark, we are just under 10 minutes away from actually getting the start of the eclipse in our location here. Uh, totality not till 324, uh, but they've already been hard at work. They've been working since 6 p.m. on Sunday where they've been doing... They're going for 30 consecutive hours straight of balloon launches here. So that included overnight tonight when we got here, the midnight crew cleared out and uh, the new day side shift took over. So we're still in the process of this, but they're all excited here back now, ready to go. Uh, and they actually are starting to ramp up balloon launches now to be every half hour as we work our way through the course of the eclipse. Now, the point of this is to see how the atmosphere changes from the start leading up to the start during and after the eclipse to see what happens with the atmosphere. Now, we're not alone here as well. You can see behind me, there's a, another set of tents off in the distance in that field. That's NASA. NASA's actually here, too, launching some drones to see the, for themselves how the conditions are changing as well and going to compare that data to what you Albany gets with their weather balloons. So it's a great group here. We've been chatting with them throughout the course of the day today. You're going to hear from them coming up in just a little bit, and we'll send it back to you guys. All right, Reed, thank you very much. We'll talk with Reed very shortly. Rachel TD is also in the path of totality right now, covering the eclipse from Lake Placid. She's taking in the special celestial event at the historic Olympic Park in Lake Placid, home of the 1980 and 1932 Winter Olympic Games. Rachel, people are planning to witness history there again. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mark and Sabrina. Yeah, Mark, in both of the rinks here, named after those years, there was curling and ice skating earlier today uh, with fancy lighting, and it was actually really, really neat. But outside right now, this is the speed skating oval that you see behind me here, and as you can see, it is packed. People started uh, coming in here on 10:15 this morning. The watch party technically starts right now with the eclipse uh, starting here in just a little bit. But there are food trucks out here. There's waffles. There's uh, Polish sausages. There are French fries. There are dogs here. There's music. It's quite the atmosphere, quite the party. And uh, we've been talking to people who are here either with uh, amateur telescopes or they have their uh, 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 cameras or they're here just to view it through their eclipse glasses. But everybody is here not only to experience uh, the eclipse that's happening here today, but also to experience the Olympic Museum that's behind us. I talked to one of the media uh, people here and they mentioned that they're seeing a lot of people who are here for the first time today, which is really exciting for Lake Placid and the surrounding areas. White Face Mountain also had some events today. The surrounding mountains had events as well. Uh, the ski jumps have an event. So there's a whole bunch of parties that are also just popping up that are unsanctioned. The media lady again saying, uh, like, yeah, we, it's none of our business. We don't know what those are, what those are. So these are the ones that they're focused on. Very exciting. Now, a reminder, I know we've hammered this home, but the eclipse glasses are so, so important. I have mine here. Chief photographer CJ North has his as well. We have a special solar lens for the camera that we're going to show you in just a little bit. But uh, really exciting stuff out here at Mark and Sabrina. So for right now, I'll send it back to you. All right, Rachel, sun is shining brightly there in Lake Placid. Thank you very much. And there was a lot of concern sure. about the weather. April is typically cloudy, making it challenging to perhaps witness a celestial phenomenon. Let's keep our fingers crossed and check in with Chief Meteorologist Paul Cayano. He's keeping an eye on things right now. How's it looking right now, Paul? Yeah, guys, uh, we've been watching these high, thin clouds, which really shouldn't present too much of a problem with the uh, eclipse viewing. I mean, it may filter out a little bit of that direct sun on a 
perfectly crystal clear blue day, but look outside over downtown Albany right now. We have some of these high thin clouds, but really that's about it. And if you can go back a year ago, even a month ago and say this is what the sky would look like for the eclipse, we would have signed up for this any day of the week. Looking up at Saratoga Springs, this is where the sun is just off the screen to the to the upside here. We're going to wind up watching this slide right into the frame over the next hour or so. So we've got our CDPHP first warning cams on the eclipse. I've darkened the satellite picture so you can see the high thin clouds in white just passing Syracuse heading toward the Capital District. I think we're going to hit this right. The thicker clouds are out towards Syracuse and I think most of that is going to stay off to the west. So anywhere from Albany points north Lake Placid probably even read out by fourth drum should be okay. The other factor temperatures just gorgeous in the 60s. We will see the temperature drop a little bit when the sun is obscured by the moon. And not only that, we have some of these clouds working their way in. So it's going to be a close call, but I think we're going to thread the needle here looking for the eclipse to start down here in Texas in the next hour or so. And then the path will take it, of course, right up through the middle of the country uh, out toward western New York by about uh, 2 30 uh, 3 o'clock. We'll stop the clock when it's about to hit Buffalo and you see here at about 318 and then of course the eclipse traverses the northern part of New York by about 330. So uh, things are looking good weather wise. We'll watch it like a hawk through the next hour and a half to see exactly the conditions outside for you and uh, make your eclipse viewing as good as it could possibly be. Sabrina. Paul, you just made a lot of people happy with that forecast. Thank you very much. We're about an hour and 20 minutes away before we see uh, partial totality here in the capital region. As much totality as we can get, exactly. which is about 97%. We're right? going to take it. If you can't step outside to check things out, we have you covered. Check this out. This is the News Channel 13 Eclipse Cam. It's an interactive experience for those of you watching the eclipse from your home or wherever you are. You control it from your phone or your computer. This is uh, the view from the roof right now of our studio here in Manan. We'll be checking in with this camera throughout this newscast. That's a live look, and you can check it out for yourself. Just scan the QR code you see here on your screen. Now, here in Albany County, we'll see a deep partial eclipse peaking, as we said, at about 96.9% .9 coverage of the solar spectacle. The city of Albany is hosting an eclipse party on the Skyway. Tessa Bentulin, not far from there this afternoon. She joins us now live from the Capitol Park there. Tessa, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, Mark and Sabrina. I already got my glasses on my head, ready to go when that eclipse is here. And actually, I passed by a group of students here from Myers Middle School. You guys get an early of school. Say hi, guys. <laughs> so why are you excited to watch the eclipse? Because it's the first time that uh, I saw it. <laughs> and do you guys all have your glasses? Yes. yes. This is my first time experiencing something like this, seeing something like this, getting to experience it with my friends. Yes. And did you guys learn about this in school? Yes. yes. We watched the videos. Indeed. And stuff. Videos. Yeah. So what are you most excited for? You're going to a party up on the plaza, right? Yes. yes. To, to see when it blacks out, kind of, to right. when it gets dark. That's yeah. what I want to see. When the eclipse when it starts. Out. So how what, the your, what do you think your favorite part's going to be about this whole experience? What do you think you're going to learn? How, how it looks. looks. How, how, how it looks and enjoying it with my friends. Yeah, yeah right. Say. That's the best part. Do it with all your friends. Have fun. Okay, go to the plaza. Have fun for us. Eat some food. Make sure to wear your glasses. So these are our students from Myers Middle School. So have fun, guys. But yeah, that's basically what's going on here in downtown area. We're right next to the Capitol. A lot of people passing by us either going to the Skyway or going up to the plaza where there's a party as well. So it's going to be a good time out here just waiting until that eclipse happens. But for now, we'll throw it back to you, Mark and Sabrina, back in the studio. Well, Tessa Bentulin live right now, right outside the state capitol. Thank you, Tessa. Those students are so excited. Yeah, they got out of school early to see them. It's well worth it. It is just about 210, 209 to be exact right now, and things are starting to get other uh, underway. The eclipse is just beginning, about to begin in Fort Drum with the moon just about to start moving in between the sun and the earth. And as Reed mentioned, it will be a while until full totality. We can expect that to happen ar around 324 this afternoon. And still ahead for us, we will hear from Juanique Martinez. She is uh, in Lake George right now. And Stella Porter, she's at Siena College. Our special live team coverage of the total solar eclipse continues. Stay with us.
Welcome back to News Channel 13 special live coverage of the great solar eclipse, the great American eclipse 212 coming up on 213 now, and that's a live look at the eclipse happening in Mexico right now, Torreon, Mexico right now, and uh, an eclipse just about ha to happen in totality there. And this will be one of the um, longest total solar eclipses in centuries, uh, lasting approximately four minutes, 26 seconds in that region, in the Mexico region. So we are just kicking things off as we are waiting now for our turn here. Yeah, about 325, 326 here in the capital region of New York. Let's find out exactly, though, when you can expect to see the to so total solar eclipse here. Paul Cayano breaks it down for us. The total solar eclipse will be over New York on April 8th, 2024, beginning at 316 p.m. The moon will pass between the Earth and the sun, turning day into night for one and a half minutes to three and a half minutes. The roughly 100 mile wide path of totality will enter in the western part of the state and will exit through northern New York just before 330 p.m. Cities and towns within this path include Jamestown, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Watertown, Old Forge, Lake Placid, and Plattsburgh. The entire event will last up to three and a half hours across the U.S., marking the time the sun is first obstructed in Texas to the last moments when the moon shadow is cast in Maine. Through New York, the speed of the moon shadow will accelerate from about 2,210 miles per hour to 2,735 miles per hour. All right, Paul, thank you very much. The majority of the capital region will not see totality, but we will be awfully close. Yeah, most of the area will range from 95 to 99 percent totality. Take a look at this chart. Nearly all communities around here will see peak coverage at about 326 this afternoon. We are getting there. Checking in once again with the News Channel 13 Eclipse Cam. Now, using your cell phone or your computer, you can actually look up, down, left and right and explore all 360 degrees of the environment. And this is the view from the roof of our studio here in Menands. You can check it out yourself. Just scan the QR code that we have for you here on your screen. There's a QR code. There it is. And you can uh, use your phone or your computer to operate that camera. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Definitely sure check it out. Many state and local municipalities warned New Yorkers over the last few weeks about the potential traffic problems caused by people traveling to view the eclipse. Now we saw traffic heading north even still this morning, so you probably have seen these signs warning drivers the roads will be clogged as people travel from their viewing spots. So they advise you, if you can, give yourself extra time and think about maybe leaving a little later and waiting all of the traffic out. Yeah, don't park along the shoulder. That would create a nightmare. So let's take a live look at the roads uh, right Right now and we see some problems. Yes, let's start with uh, the Northway northbound exit eight and traffic is backed up there. Uh, one of our producers just looked into this. There appears to be a crash. So two left lanes in this area are closed right now. That's uh, the northbound lanes. How about the Northway a little farther north in Queensbury? No problems there. Over to uh, exit 13 Saratoga Springs and we're looking OK there right now. A little farther south on the Northway exit nine Clifton Park Route 9 146. No problems there at all. Let's head further north now. Meteorologist Juanique Martinez decided to forego cars altogether. She's in Lake George taking in the event, the eclipse from the water. She joins us live from a boat owned by No Shoes Cruises. Juanique, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a beautiful day, and as you mentioned, I'm out on the open water. You could not ask for a better view of the total solar eclipse. And we are not in the path of total totality here, but in the Adirondacks, we have 99% coverage. So really, you can't really ask for anything better if you're not in the path of totality. Now, we are battling just a few high, thin clouds right now at the moment, but the sunshine is out, and I am joined by a great crew right now on the No Shoes Cruises, and Rick Scanlon was very, very gracious to host us today. So it is a beautiful day. We have lots of watch parties today. Um, we also have a lot of events happening today in Lake George. It's beautiful. The peak total solar eclipse happens at 326. So we do still have a few more minutes for that. But you know, the excitement is here and this rivals the peak seasons at Lake George. Back to you guys. 
Juanique Martinez, thank you so much. What a great spot to she be at. She got the best assignment today. Absolutely. Yeah. And so 99% totality where Juanique is right now. Yeah. We'll check it back in with her as we approach that right around 326 right. this afternoon. With the timing of this event in mind, many local schools either closed for the day or dismissed early. Most of them have canceled after school activities. In Albany County schools in Albany, Gilderland, North Colony and South Colony and Waterville dismissed students early. Saratoga County students in Boston Spa dismissed an hour early just about 17 minutes ago at 2 o'clock. Sports practices will hold off until 430 today and schools in Schenectady County also ended classes early for the day. Thousands of people are converging on New York to watch the solar eclipse and some headed to Siena College. News Channel 13 got a first hand look at the telescopes at the Dudley Observatory, but they will not be in use during the eclipse. Astronomer Mindy Townsend told us these telescopes do not have the right solar filter on them, so it would burn the retina to look at the sun through them. That damage, of course, can be permanent, but she said this event offers a nice opportunity for research. And the school is having a watch party that started just about an hour ago. Stella Porter is is there she joins us now live from the quad over there in Loudonville. Hey Stella. Hi, Mark and Sabrina. Lots happening here today. Many astronomy students who are able to use Dudley Observatory for their studies are actually up north in the path of totality. But for everybody else, there is this nice watch party. You heard that. Put on your glasses. The main event has begun. There you go. So there's lots going on here as we get underway. You see students getting their glasses on, getting ready to be safe and look up. Uh, we have plenty of games going on here. The the uh, student radio station St. Siena College Radio has been blasting some uh, sun themed tunes all afternoon here. This watch party got underway around one o'clock and many students told me that their professors pushed some classes back so that they'd be able to come on down here and get a glimpse of what is about to occur. You also see we have some younger students uh, who do not have school today from around the state who have come here to where it is probably going to be one of the better views considering we just have some light cloud cover here but should be able to see a lot of this. So again, everybody getting ready for the main event. I've got my glasses ready, guys, and we'll check back in with you in just a couple of minutes. Back to you. Della, thank you. Looks like a good time at Siena College this afternoon. Another guy who's always up for a good time is our reporter, Dan Levy, who is uh, in South Southwest Albany County at Thatcher Park. He will be joining us live, as will meteorologist Reed Kisselback, who is in Fort Drum, not too far from Watertown. And that's a live look there. Live look. You can see the moon slowly creeping in as it starts to uh, obscure the sun. A totality there, 100% at 324. It's going to last three minutes and 39 seconds. Back to News Channel 13 special live coverage of the Great American Eclipse. That's a live shot of the eclipse in Torreon, Mexico, where it's a little cloudy, so you can see really neither the moon nor the sun right now. But trust us, it's there. 32 million Americans in 15 states will be in the shadow of the moon. Today. That region just finished totality and they were battling some clouds earlier as we were watching some live coverage earlier today but now we move on looking forward to what we can see here in New York and while hiking to the top of a mountain sounds like a great way to see the total solar eclipse the New York Department of Environmental Conservation does not recommend hiking the Adirondack High Peaks or any trails today above 3,000 feet elevation not only is there mud but the snow from last week's storm just melted that means there's also a good chance for slippery trails in some areas those trails will be even more treacherous in darkness. Dan Levy hiked just about as far as is allowed. He's at Thatcher Park right now. Dan, people have been gathering there, uh, hoping to see uh, something with the clear skies provided. What a beautiful view behind you. It's a gorgeous view. You're right, Sabrina. Mark, good afternoon to you. And as a matter of fact, this celestial show is already underway. I know the peak uh, darkness here is about an hour away. However, we can see that the moon is indeed moving in front of the sun. So let me tell you 
Oh, now I can see you. There you are. Couldn't see you before. Let me tell you what we've seen here at Thatcher Park here in the Helderberg Mountains. Uh, people began to gather here late this afternoon as uh, Josh Morrell pans over there. Uh, I can tell you that folks have gathered here with lawn chairs and blankets and picnic baskets and cameras and dogs not to mention they've come here with a sense of nostalgia and adventure weather conditions they're not ideal however they are pretty darn good carolina blue skies are dominating here and yes there are some white high thin clouds above temperature in the high 50s it is gorgeous the parking lots here at thatcher park are pretty full and keep in mind we you know there aren't large crowd shots because this park has 2,500 acres. There are 25 hiking trails, and, and so the people are scattered throughout um, the, the, uh, the the Helderbergs here. These three gentlemen happen to be soccer players at the University of Albany. I'm going to ask you to take a look at that. Uh, this is Chris, by the way, from Toronto. Chris, what do you think? What are your uh, observations? Yeah, we can see slightly the moon is covering the sun already. Already we can see a partial covering. It's pretty cool, honestly. Yeah. These glasses are awesome. Yeah, well, for a hundred bucks of yours. <laughs> this is Zach. Zach, talk to me. Why was it important for you to be here today? You know, it's just, I'm a local. It's an amazing view, once in a lifetime opportunity. And it just looks amazing. All Perfect right. day. Share those with Ethan. Let me see that. How's the soccer team doing, all right? We're doing very well. All right, good Undefeated luck. Undefeated this spring. Keep it up. Ethan, what do you think? Yeah, it's definitely starting to cover more and more. Um, as someone from New York, since it was coming through, we had to come out, take a look. I know not everyone in the country is getting to see this, so got to take advantage of it. So it's pretty fortuitous that you guys, yeah. that we all live so close to the path of totality. Yeah. So thank you for sharing your observations. Thank you for giving my glasses back. <laughs> uh, we will be here for all afternoon, and when it gets dark here, we will get some reaction, and we will share that with you. So Mark and Sabrina will send it back to you for now. All right, Dan, thank you very much. I'm glad to see you got your glasses back. Fans won't have to wear their solar eclipse glasses during today's game at Yankee Stadium. After all, the New York Yankees had been scheduled to play the Miami Marlins at 2.05 today, just before the start of the eclipse. The Yankees announced Thursday that the start time for the game was pushed back to 6.05. The Yankees, I guess, reconsidered the challenge of playing through the eclipse, including potential in-game delays. We are now an hour away from totality in the areas where we are expecting in Lake Placid and Fort Drum. This is a live look right now at the crowd continuing to gather in Lake Placid right now. It's called Glow for the Gold, and we'll go back there live as uh, the eclipse becomes more total there. And a live look once again at our camera in Fort Drum just outside Watertown as we are seeing the moon slowly creep in. Welcome back. A live look right now at totality underway. This is a view from Texas right now. Those are the flares around it. I love seeing that. It's beautiful. And uh, we're going to see that here in just about 50 minutes or so. And let's go to Reed Kisselback, meteorologist who is in uh, Fort Drum near Watertown. And if my timing is right, Reed, it's about 51 minutes away from totality there. But you're there with you Albany students, the turbulent eddies, who are putting up some weather balloons. It looks like them right over your shoulder. Is that right? Yeah, Mark, they just geared up and actually lost, launched the 230 balloon, so we're hanging out here. And we've been mentioning that these balloons uh, capture data, and so we wanted to kind of take a closer look at the tool that you actually use to get that data. So joining me now is uh, Jun Wang, the director of the New York State Mesonet uh, at UAlbany, and thank you for taking the time to talk with us here. And uh, one, how are the students doing? 30, 30 continuous hours of balloon launch is certainly a lot, but it looks like they're doing a great job. They are doing great. They really enjoy this field campaign, and then they learn a lot of things uh, what they cannot learn from the class. <laughs> That's the perfect way to do it. Nothing beats hands-on experience. So can you talk to us about what's in your hand right here? I know this is attached to the balloon, but can you tell us a little bit about what it's sending back? Yeah. So we always talk about weather balloon, but the most important thing is this called the radio sound. It's a weather instrument to measure temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, and wind direction from the ground all the way to 100,000 feet every 
Ten, uh, two seconds, that about 10 meter. So around the globe, we have 960 stations every day. They launch this twice a day, and it's very important for weather forecasting. Yeah, and it's very, it's funny to think you get all this information from something that can pretty much just fit in the palm of your hand. So yeah. it's very cool to see, and I know you guys are going to continue to ramp up the balloon launches, uh, and I mean, they're doing a great job. This is a fun group of kids right here. They're very much enjoying it. I'm sure it's been fun to be the advisor to them. Yeah, uh, this is great. I'll be involved uh, in this nationwide clips pro ballooning project uh, from 10 years ago. So it's really good. Our students into this. It's something I'm really excited, uh, and especially you all when you get involved. Certainly making all of us proud here, alums and those from the area watching too. So uh, that's what we have going on here. The eclipse looks great. If you actually want to take a look one more time, we have a really great shot set up from our photographer, the amazing Justin Shumway here. Um, with that, if you take that shot, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Reed Kisselback, thank you very much. And there is that live look that Reed was just talking about. Again, he's in Fort Drum at 324. Fort Drum will be in totality. And right now, it's a nice clear shot there. And it will have three minutes, 40 seconds. So that's one of the longer totalities. <laughs> these, these terms that we're using that we don't often use. Exactly. Another spot where we will see the totality is Lake Placid. And we know there's a big crowd gathering there right yeah, now. Yeah, they're glowing for the gold up in Lake Placid at the Olympic ice skating rink. Rachel Titi is there now once again. Hello again, Rachel. Hi, Mark. Hi, Sabrina. Yeah, the crowd keeps growing. People keep walking through the gates behind us here, and so people are coming to view the uh, hopefully totality here shortly. So as you take a look behind me here, this is the crowd. There's a lot of people who are now starting to look up at the sky with their glasses as totality uh, is beginning here, just beginning. There are people playing in the snow, uh, throwing a football, playing Frisbee. It's really a party atmosphere here. We have the food trucks. We have the music. We have the activities that are inside the Olympic Center, the curling, the ice skating. Uh, so a lot of people showing up here and they really weren't sure how many people were coming today because uh, this is a free event. People can just show up here. Uh, so they were basing their uh, number of how many people they thought were going to show up based on how many tickets were sold at White Face Mountain, which is close uh, nearby here if you're familiar with the area. So a good crowd, I would say. Now, something that we are going to be doing is we are going to be showing you the sun. We have these solar filters for our camera here. And just as a demonstration, we're going to show you what this looks like. This is just like your glasses uh, that you have at home, your Eclipse glasses. It has kind of that black lens on the end. And when I put this on the camera, it's going to get very, very dark. And all you're going to be able to see is the sun. So since we've started to get uh, totality here, we're going to put this over the camera just to show you an example. And chief photographer CJ North is going to pan up at the sun and the little sliver. Oh, I'll grab it for you, CJ. One second. Here we go. Live TV, folks. Here we go. Putting that filter back on there for you. And we're going to pan up to the sun. And you can see that very small sliver that is being taken out of the sun right now. That moon just starting to go in front of the sun. They're a really beautiful shot. And uh, people have been glancing up occasionally. We've seen people taking photos uh, with their iPhone. Make sure you have the glasses in front of them so that you get that really nice shot. So for right now, we're going to send it back to you guys, Mark and Sabrina, in the studio as we continue to keep tabs on the sun. Rachel Titi, thank you very much. Reporting live in Lake Placid. Let's check out the, once again, the News Channel 13 Eclipse Cam to give you the view from the roof of our station here in Manans. This camera is streaming live now and is streaming live from the News Channel 13 YouTube channel for the duration of our special coverage. Now using your cell phone or your computer, you can actually pan everything around, look up and down, left and right, and explore 360 degrees of the environment. You can check it out for yourself. You can scan that QR code that is on your screen right now. But the important part is, are we going to be able to see it here? Right, 325, the clouds, 326, totality, exactly. near totality, will the clouds allow for it? It means everything, right? So let's check in one more time with Chief Meteorologist Paul Cayano. Hey, Paul. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, we saw the clouds up on the 360 cam, so there's some that are building in. I want to show you this shot. I mentioned this on Friday, that there'd be some other cool meteorological optics going on because of the high, thin clouds. These are the cirrus clouds that have been moving in front of the sun, producing 
seeing this 22 degree halo and uh, this is just the millions of ice crystals up in the sky refracting the sun's light. I want to thank Christine from uh, Indian Lake for sending this shot in some other places right around Saratoga Springs. I've also uh, seen a halo around the sun. Now out toward Amsterdam, look at the thicker clouds looking westbound past and into the Mohawk Valley and uh, these clouds going to be a race. Let's just get to the bottom line. We have about 50 minutes left, 45 minutes left, and these clouds are heading our way. So we'll see how many of the clouds get in here and obscure some of the at least partial eclipse locally here and then the full eclipse up in the north country. So what I've done here is I've I've pointed out how much of the sun will be obscured by the moon. And you could see when you head south toward Malta, 97.6 looks like a good number and it is, but there's a big difference between getting 96, 98, 99 and 100 once you get up the north way at about exit 28 at the Scroon Lake. So uh, those of you in totality at the 100% line will see a fascinating sight with us uh, going into complete darkness. Others of us will see a really good partial eclipse. But again, we're watching closely this cloud cover and on the visible satellite picture, you could see a little bit of thicker clouds out in the Mohawk Valley as they approach the greater capital district. We'll be on top of this. Also, the rest of the weather and uh, the complete report heading into that three o'clock hour coming up in just a bit. Sabrina. Paul, thank you. Keep an, an eye on that. We'll keep our fingers crossed that the skies stay clear enough. Let's check in one more time with Tessa Bentulin right outside the New York State Capitol. 97% totality at around 326. Tessa's hoping to see it from your vantage point. Good afternoon, Tessa. Hi, Mark and Sprint. I've got my glasses with me. I look pretty good, I think. You know, every so often checking over to see what it looks like right now. It's pretty cool. I know we've got that live cam to see what the eclipse looks like at the moment. We've got more people coming out to the Capitol, including two people I just met right on a bench, just sitting down. I've got Dennis and Diane with me. You two are from Rochester and came down to Albany. Both of them are going up there. For the good weather. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've got nice sunny weather today. We got lucky with this one. You're down here for convention but you got the glasses you decided to come out here what's your favorite part of today oh this you know being being interviewed for the eclipse <laughs> well, i appreciate that now diane you have both told me that you have been together for 58 yeah. years you've high been together since high school sweethearts, high school sweethearts. High school sweethearts. sweethearts yeah. so seeing an experience like this together have you ever done something like this we saw no. partial eclipse once, but yeah. that was but not a together. Kind of, and, <laughs> yeah, not together. So this is good. So you would think of 58 years, you wouldn't think many new experience, but today is a nice one. Yes, yes one very day. much so. And when do you head back home? Uh, tomorrow. 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 Yep. So enjoy the rest of the day. Have fun. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. Go Thank back you. on your bench. Enjoy yeah. the rest of the day. Thank good you. weather. Thank Have fun, guys. Well, see, we got so many people, some people coming from Rochester, a lot of people we see coming from their jobs in the state capitol, or there's a convention in town as well that a lot of people are coming uh, from outside. So it's getting pretty packed out here. Hopefully we'll get some more people as the day go, goes on and uh, we get closer to that uh, eclipse, almost 98%, 97%. Um, so, but for now, we'll toss it back to you in the studio, Mark and Sabrina. Tessa Bentulin live in Capitol Park in Albany. Thank you very much. And congratulations to Diane and Dan who drove from Rochester to Albany. To be here because Thanks. of the weather. Good for you. All them. right, Tessa, thank you very much. Let's take a live look from our camera at Thatcher Park in Voorheesville, Albany County. Oh, nice shot. You can shot see there, that. Huh? Wow, that's beautiful. As we uh, take a quick break here, just a quick fact here. The moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but also 400 times closer. And that's why this is lining up. Welcome back to our special coverage, and that is a live look at Dallas, Texas in totality right now. Just started at 2.42 this afternoon. No wonder it's called the greatest show not on earth, right? That's, right. that's, that's beautiful, and that is a live Spectacular. look. Spectacular. Wow. Incredible. And we, uh, of course, are waiting for our turn here. Let's go back to Lake George right now. Yeah, Juanique Martinez, meteorologist, got the plum assignment for the day. She's on the water on Lake George with a charter company called No Shoes Cruises. How's it going there? now, Wanique. 
It's going great, Mark and Sabrina. First of all, I want to thank you for this great assignment. As you mentioned, this is prime viewing for the solar eclipse, and we are the only boat four miles, so it is a beautiful day out here on Lake George, and I'm joined by Katie Round. Um, Katie's going to talk to us about her experience so far and you know what she's looking forward to. So first off, Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Where are you from? Um, I'm right here in Lake George. Um, born and raised. I'm really grateful to be out here. It's a beautiful day. This is my first solar eclipse, so really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen um, out with a good group of people and yeah, looking forward to seeing what's going to go on. And why did you decide to stay local for the solar eclipse? Um, stay local? Uh, it was kind of like a last minute de uh, decision. Uh, just was going to go out in the village of Lake George and then got invited on this boat. So really excited to be out in Lake George. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. So yeah, just kind of looking forward to seeing what's going to go on with having the glasses on and yeah, you know, go from there. And yeah. And why, why are you out on the lake versus being on land right now? on the lake um you know what it just kind of happened to work out i really didn't expect this today i had a um, friend that offered and i was like yeah absolutely so um really really happy and excited so um, happy to have the day off and it's honestly 60 degrees and sunny so couldn't get much better than this you know yeah, well, thank you, Katie. As she mentioned, it is a beautiful day. You can't get much better than 60 degrees and sunny out on the open lake. So for now, I'll send it back to you guys. Juanique Martinez live on Lake George. Thank you, Juanique. Now, Rochester, New York is finding itself in the path of totality for the first time in 99 years. The skies there started to get dark at 207. Totality is expected at 320 this afternoon. It's expected to last for three minutes and 38 seconds, and the skies will return to normal just after 430 this afternoon. Our sister station WHEC in Rochester has been preparing for this moment for weeks now. Yeah, reporter Jennifer Luthi is standing by. She's in Brockport, about 25 minutes outside of Rochester. And Jennifer, you are in the path of totality, where again, it's supposed to happen right around 320 this afternoon there. Yeah, Mark Sabrina, we're not just in the path of totality. We are on the exact center line here in Brockport. You can see behind me the uh, the overhang there saying that is the exact center line here in Brockport. And because of that, we are seeing a huge turnout of people here despite the cloud cover that we're experiencing right now. But just check out this crowd. Folks are ready to enjoy this. And I actually found someone from your neck of the woods. Morgan, come on over. Morgan is from Amsterdam my friends and she's a, a student here at Brockport yep and what do you think of Eclipse Day here on the center line I think it's really exciting because it's nothing that I've ever experienced before and I can see a lot of people here today yeah a lot of students a lot of community members is it a, the turnout you were expecting yeah it's really big <laughs> how big of a deal is it that we have this much cloud cover <laughs> Um, I'm kind of scared that we just might be in darkness and not actually get to see it, but fingers crossed we might get to see it. Yes, and for your folks back in Amsterdam, your friends and family there, unfortunately they're not getting the same experience you are, regardless of the cloud cover. Yeah, I know. My parents told me, they're like, oh, make sure you video it for us. And I was like, um, <laughs> it's a little cloudy here. It is, but we're not going to let that keep us down because Mark and Sabrina, uh, some of our scientific experts who have experienced totality other parts of the country say 100% totality, even with clouds, is better than 99% totality in the sun. So we are going to make the best of what we've got here on the center line, and we are going to uh, just be here and experiencing tech totality. And I should also mention that while the Rochester and Finger Lakes area get three minutes and 38 seconds of totality, here in Brockport, we get an extra five seconds because we are on the center line. Back to you guys in Albany. All right, Jennifer Lukey live in Rockport for us this afternoon. Jennifer, thank you. Yeah, she really sold that. <laughs> sure I appreciate did. that. All right, another live look at that beautiful shot from uh, Fort Drum. Of course, we have our crew there right now. We'll be right back. live special coverage wow. of the darkest hour, the total eclipse, the great American eclipse, 
shows you a live look in Arkansas now. That's a live shot of the moon blocking out the sun. And totality over there. Wow, incredible. Let us turn to Siena College one more time where there's a big watch party underway. And Stella Porter is right in the middle of it. Good afternoon, Stella. Hi, Mark and Sabrina. Maybe you can hear the music. Lots of students getting ready to watch as much totality as we will see here at Siena College, home of Dudley Observatory, where some astronomy students are studying this up north, led by the Dudley astronomer, Dr. Mindy Townsend, who is here to share a little bit about what we're experiencing this afternoon. So, Dr. Townsend, what are we seeing right this very moment? So right now, I would say eyeballing it, we're at about 40% partial eclipse. Um, we're only going to get to see about a 97% partial eclipse, which is a lot. Like at its maximum, we should see just a really like a thin sliver of the sun, which should be really, really amazing. I was looking up at it just a few minutes ago. Like it's it's hard to be here interviewing you. Like I, being interviewed. You want to be watching. I want to be watching. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, we'll get you back in just a second. But you said before to me that these types of eclipses are really important for research. Can you tell us some fields that are really looking at this today? Sure, like solar astronomy. So astronomy looking directly at, or totally at the sun. Um, totality is really important because this is really the only time they can study in depth the solar corona, which is the outer atmosphere of the sun. It's the only time we can really get down to the bottom of that layer of the, of the sun. Um, so this is really important for them to understand what's going on with the sun because the sun is our star but there's a lot of important questions that we still don't have answers to. Um, meteorologists, climate scientists, they also do studies because the atmosphere experiences this sudden decrease in heat and energy as the sun is blocked and that's basically unreproducible in a lab. So a lot of research groups are sending up weather balloons to really take measurements of the atmosphere. Um, animal behaviorists also study animals during this time because especially in totality they kind of freak out a little bit because it's suddenly nighttime and it's not supposed to be. So lots of fields looking to this to absolutely. learn something today. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Mindy Townsend, thank you so much for providing a little bit of insight on what we're seeing in the sky today. I'll let you get back to <laughs> looking at it and we'll check back in with you in a few minutes. All Guys, right, back thanks. to you. <laughs> All right, Stella Porter live at Siena College with that big watch party. Stella, thank you very much. Let's uh, turn to a quick break. Once again, we will speak with Dan Levy live at Thatcher Park in Voorheesville next. Stay with us. Back live, the darkest hour, our special coverage of the Great American Eclipse. And a live look right now, I believe that's Jonesboro, Arkansas, where uh, it appears they're in totality right now. Wow, spectacular shot there. About to see those rings that yes. they talk about. They call it a diamond ring, and it looks like there might be two there. Amazing. Yeah, the more the better. Back, yeah, <laughs> back here in the Capital Region. Uh, Dan Levy is live at Thatcher Park in Albany County, where, Dan, I understand the clouds have begun mm. to roll in. What we feared most has happened here. The blue skies that kind of dominated the morning here at Thatcher Park have really dissipated. The clouds have rolled in, and uh, let me take a look. So the eclipse, the partial eclipse at this point, is about halfway, but it's very fuzzy, very blurry. So for anybody who was coming here hoping to get a really good glimpse of that eclipse, uh, at this point you're out of luck because uh, really the, the, the visibility is, is almost non-existent. Now the glasses certainly help, but uh, I can tell you that Thatcher Park uh, began to fill up late this morning. Uh, there are 2,500 acres here and there are 25 hiking trails and people are dispersed all over uh, this gorgeous park. Uh, you can see See people are on lawn chairs, they have beach blankets, they have picnic lunches, they have dogs, they have frisbees. Uh, they're having a good time and uh, quite frankly uh, the, these folks seem a little disappointed at this uh, this point. You can see some of them glancing up at the uh, at the sun but uh, again it's very very blurry, very very fuzzy. So at this point people are going to keep their fingers crossed, going to hope for the best. Uh, we still have 
gosh, about uh, almost a half hour until uh, totality here. So maybe things will change. And uh, come back to me and uh, check in a little bit later on. We'll find out what's going on. Certainly will, Dan. Thank you very much. Certainly. Live at Thatcher Park in Voorheesville, hoping those clouds move out just And in you time. know, it's a good reminder to continue to use the glasses even when it's cloudy. Absolutely. Right? Don't, don't look up thinking, oh, it's completely obscured by, by clouds. It doesn't make it safer. So let's no. check in with another live look right now in Fort Drum. We will continue our special live team coverage of the Great American Eclipse here on News Channel 13. Welcome back to our special live team coverage of the total solar eclipse. We're inching closer to the peak of totality here in New York State, and our coverage will continue this hour. We have uh, covered you across New York State. Meteorologist Reed Kisselback and Rachel Teedy bring us uh, to totality. Reed is in Fort Drum. Rachel is in Lake Placid. Tessa Bentulin, Stella Porter, Dan Levy, and meteorologist Juanique Martinez stayed closer to home, bringing us some comprehensive coverage of how people across the capital region are marking this once-in-a-lifetime event. 20 six minutes away from what we will see the as close to totality as we can get here. And meteorologist Reed Kisselback is live in Fort Drum. He's alongside some UAlbany students who are gathering there. Reed's getting ready. I can see he's all set. He's in position. Reed, you look comfy. <laughs> Yeah, guys, you know, I'm doing what everybody else is doing here, right? We're all here to see the eclipse as well as get our data here. And so I got to say, I know Dan Levy said it got cloudy and the view is ruined, but I got to say you got to make the most of what you got. We had some cloud cover. It gets thick. It, it thins out at points. But if you still put on the glasses, you can still see an outline of an eclipse there. And I think something is better than nothing for sure. So certainly a lot of folks here doing so, enjoying that. We also uh, just launched the latest uh, weather balloon at three o'clock here so uh that was by team nasa doing the honorary launch right there and so uh just a friendly reminder those launches take about two hours for the data to come back and the balloons can get as high as around uh, 100,000 feet so uh right up into the stratosphere which is pretty impressive on days like today but very also cool to see the data when it finally comes in to show how the atmosphere has been changing leading up to during and eventually after the eclipse here so at the moment we're quiet we're hanging out we're looking at the eclipse here and we'll send it back to you guys He's Reed Kisselback. Just chilling there, just isn't he? Just chilling, taking the whole yeah. rare phenomenon in and hoping those clouds move out. Let's go to Lake Placid right now. Yeah, Rachel Tini is there. Rachel, you're at uh, Glow for the Gold in Olympic Park with a big crowd behind you. A big crowd, Mark and Sabrina, and this is the crowd. Take a look behind me here. People have been showing up. People have dogs. They have babies. There's a whole crew here, and people have been driving for quite a ways around to get here. I spoke to a couple earlier today. They were the first people to put their chairs in this oval here today to get their spot. Hear what they had to say about being here today. Do you chase eclipses? Is that what you do? This is this qualifies as chasing. Yeah, it's our this second is our second. One. <laughs> oh, okay, Does that it. count? Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing a partial when I was in like grade ten from the high school window. Okay. And it was clouded over, but you could see the bite out of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the last thing I remember back in the seventies. <laughs> So they saw the one in 2017, they're seeing the one today, and then they want to see the one that's coming up in just a little bit that's not going to be in the U.S. So they are uh, beginner eclipse chasers, this being their second one. I'm also joined by Tom here, who's from New Hampshire. Thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having me here. You have kind of a cool toy that you've yeah. created for your son here. Talk about how this works and how this is a bit of a science experiment. So this is a safe way for people to see the eclipse going on in real time without needing the glasses and without looking directly at the sun. What we're looking at here is actually uh, what's called a pinhole projection and with these dots that are in the actual cardboard themselves they are actually holes punched in so that the light coming from the sun passes through them and you can actually start to see the crescent shape of what the sun looks like right now with the moon occluding part of it that that crescent shape is actually the inverse of what the moon and sun currently look like because the the light rays passing through the cardboard actually flip and it's almost like a mirror image of what's actually uh, visible in the sky right now but we're just watching it right against the cardboard 
are here and it's so cool it's you know really uh, cool to see it's a great way to see the eclipse if you don't have the glasses because you don't want to look directly at the sun obviously so talk a little bit about you're from new hampshire what was your drive like up today it was about four hours uh not a bad one at all you know great area and great destination to come to like i could not have been uh, more thrilled with being here today and uh having my whole family here yep. um it's it's been a blast awesome well thank you so much for explaining your experiment with us thomas your son i'm sure loves it he definitely does that's thank, so great thank you so much thank you so mark and sabrina we'll send it back to you reporting live from lake blessed here rachel td thank you very much that's pretty smart i saw a picture similar concept using a colander and looking at the shadow if you don't have the glasses you get all the images yes all exactly right. let's find out what we're going to see in the sky because that's what we all want to know let's go to chief meteorologist paul canna Paul. Hey guys, uh, yeah, we're within the half hour, right? About 20 minutes until uh, we get the maximum coverage here in the greater capital district. We've been looking out in Amsterdam because, as Dan said, from the Heldebergs west, we've had this thicker bank of clouds that have come in, and this is sort of obscuring the eclipse a little bit more. Some places in the capital region better than others. You can see right by the CDPHP, we're seeing the sun through the high clouds at Lake George, so we should get a decent shot there. Uh, let's stop out in Albany and adjust some high thin clouds. So I think Greater Capital District will be okay. We're going to watch that thicker bank of clouds head in. Look at what uh, the visible satellite is revealing. From about Syracuse to Utica, and then down through the Mohawk Valley and Heldebergs, we have this one strip of cirrus clouds that are a little bit thicker than the others, and this is getting ready to move into Albany. So uh, we may have a little bit of obstruction, but I think these clouds are also thinning out, and they could move through quickly enough that more of us get back to the thinnest clouds for uh, viewing at uh, the peak. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Some places may have better view than others. Another thing we've been watching, the temperature actually dropped a degree here in Albany. That's because of some clouds and also perhaps because the sun is becoming more obscured and you can see some of those clouds sliding and want to show you down in Texas. Watch the clouds disappear from Dallas up to Memphis. That's not because the clouds go away. It's because we go into the shadow of the sun from the moon. So we lose the picture and that's what we would expect from the eclipse as uh, we see the path. You are, are looking at it down near Bloomington now getting ready to head toward Buffalo and before long within the half hour uh, that totality will be here in New York State. We'll talk a lot more about the cloud cover and how it's going to affect things. We'll head up to the roof coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Paul. And if you want to check in with the News Channel 13 Eclipse Cam, this is how you do it. It couldn't be simpler. This is the view right now from the roof of our station here in Menands. This camera will be streaming live from the News Channel 13 YouTube channel for the duration of our special coverage. Let's go back to downtown Albany now and check in with Tessa Bentulin. She is live right uh, outside the state capitol, and she's been talking about people gathering. Yeah, people coming from all over there. Tessa, good afternoon. Hi, Mark and Sabrina. Yeah, we had a, a group of kids coming from middle school, and then we've also talked to someone that is from Rochester that came down to Albany because of the nicer weather here. And now we're talking to Rodney Seymour. You came all the way from Brooklyn for this. Oh, man, Brooklyn, New York, Bedford, Stuyvesant, all that and everything. Just came up here, take care of some business, but I just I just stayed an extra day just to see the eclipse because I hear it's closer here than it is in Brooklyn. So I feel the energy just come beaming down through my head and it's coming through my body and it's just feeling great. This is a good time for atoning and cleansing and, and just feeling good and just starting new things. It's exactly. all great. That's so cool. And you got your glasses. We gave you some glasses. Are you able to check oh, it out? Man, I could check it out. Let's see how it is now. Let me see. I don't have oh glasses, man, it's, it, it is almost let's see. it's almost in the total oh, eclipse. Yeah, it's almost in the total eclipse state there, so I feel like the bells and the rings and the chimes. And You're the ready to go. And, <laughs> and just ready to go and meditating and keeping the body right, tight, and in order. There we go. Thank you so much for doing an interview with us, and have fun today. Oh, man, it's a great thing. See you soon for my 64th birthday there, feeling young, vibrant, and alive. See you soon.
<laughs> All right, there you go. Everyone's excited out here to do interviews and also to watch the eclipse as well. We've got people going to the Albany Skyway, which is about five minutes down the road from where we are. We're just outside the steps of the Capitol. And also on the other side of us, people are on the plaza. There's a bunch of people gathered over there taking a look at the eclipse that's going on right now. But we'll check in with you later on in this special newscast. But for now, reporting live here in Albany, I'm Tessa Ventula and Mark Sabrina. Back to you. <laughs> Rodney's energy was everything. Rodney Seymour wins the eclipse. Absolutely. <laughs> Tessa, thank, thank you, you very much. 309 right now. We are approaching our time here. That's a live look at Thatcher Park now. Beautiful shot just about 14 or 15 minutes away from totality. Stay with us. Welcome back. It is 312 and that is a live look right now at uh, near totality. It looks like in Cleveland, Ohio totality heading our way and we are waiting for it and we are excited for it. We want to get you updated on some traffic issues. However, if you're still planning to hit the roads right now and there are some concerns uh, specifically, there's a, been a four car crash on the north way northbound near exit eight with injuries. The left two lanes were closed, but it looks like in that area in particular, things are open and flowing though smoothly. This is uh, uh, creating some backups even south of the Twin Bridges. State police say one person was injured, not considered life threatening. Let's take another look uh, north of that. That's uh, right near Queensbury on the north way. We looking, uh, we're looking good over there right now. How about the north way near exit 13, Saratoga Springs, no problems there. And exit 9 in Clifton Park, also looking okay right now. Let's head further north and check in once again with Juanique Martinez in Lake George. She is on the lake where they're about to experience about 99% totality. One eight, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a very chill scene right now on Lake George and it's starting to get a little colder so you can tell that that path of totality is currently happening. We're just a few minutes away at Lake George and I'm joined by a special guest, Mike from Colony. I want to talk to him about his experience so far. Mike, what are you most excited about? Uh, I'm excited to see something for the first time and you know the sun be totally gone for the for the time being, I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah it's and, something unique. And why did you decide to come to Lake George? Well, it was definitely a last minute thing. Uh, Rick Scanlon from No Shoes Cruises gave me a call and said, come up to the lake and uh, it made sense. So we made our way north and uh, here we are. And we were talking a little bit before about how you spend a lot of time on Lake George. How does this event compare to what you've seen in the past, maybe, you know, around the 4th of July holiday or any other time of the year? Sure. Yeah, the traffic on the way up was probably the same as any other holiday, but coming out it's still early in the season, but being out on the water, it's definitely quieter than any other, uh, you know, event or holiday going on up here. I think we're probably one of only, you know, a handful of boats we've seen all day. Um, so it's quiet. Yeah. And is there anything else you want to say? Anyone you want to say hi to? Uh, nope. I don't, you know, hi, Mom, Dad. <laughs> Shout out on the Island Wine and Liquor. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Guys, we are just a few minutes away. As I mentioned, it's starting to get a little cooler here, so so excited for that partial solar eclipse. We'll be right back after this break. All right, welcome back. And that is a live look right now at Totality in Buffalo, New York. And they have a nice clear sky for that right now. And we are just minutes away from Totality here in the Capital Region, just about seven or eight minutes away. And this will be the first total eclipse visible in New York since 1925. So to take it in, we moved up to the roof. It's all weather dependent, however, and what we're going to see is dependent on how much of those that cloud cover moves away. We should probably put on our glasses if we're going to take a, to take a look. Peak, Paul, you, you said those clouds too, were moving in and yeah. it looks like they have. And right now, unfortunately, I can't see anything. We it's still tough. do have about seven minutes, though. Yeah, I mean, and looking off to the west, I mean, some of these thicker clouds are still 
here. So, you know, it's going to be a tough call uh, to the east. There's some blue sky out there. So folks out even in, let's say, uh, out toward Cohoes or even in Rensselaer County over our shoulder here, Bald Mountain, uh, back up into Washington County, Warren County, Lake George should be OK. It's just this deck of clouds. And if we can go to Max 2, I'll show it right here on the on the satellite. Uh, you could see that little thin band of clouds just coming over the A in Albany. Those are the ones that are moving into the greater capital district. So, you know, some folks get lucky, other folks unlucky. And then the picture goes dark because we're getting the shadow, right? Yeah. <laughs> of this, the sun being yeah. shadowed by the moon. So we're not quite getting into uh, the perfect spot here in the greater capital district, but I think we'll be okay to see it with mm. our cameras. One group standing by hoping is a big group of students at Siena College right now. And Stella Porter is there with them. Stella, hello again. Hi, Mark and Sabrina. The party is underway here and we're all trying to catch a glimpse. We're noticing a little bit of a change uh, with some cloud cover, but I want to go to Dr. Mindy Townsend, the Dudley astronomer here at Siena College. As we get close to seeing as much as we're going to see here, Dr. Townsend, what are we seeing right now? So right now we're not seeing a whole lot because of the clouds. Um, but this is on for a on. Oh, oh. Okay, it's cleared out a little bit, so we're seeing like a tiny little crescent. We're we're really, really close to the maximum phase of 97% about uh, coverage for the sun. Um, so that's really cool. And you said that we're seeing a little bit of a change with the cloud cover because of the moon, is that? Um, so the, the cloud cover, when you take that much heat out of the atmosphere, it becomes like especially chaotic. So I'm not surprised that clouds kind of developed, but we're seeing a significant dimming here, kind of like early dusk. And it's, it's significantly cooler. I almost have goosebumps. Yeah. Um, I, that is part effect of the clouds, but mostly effect of the moon just slipping in front of the sun. And I also want to ask you about your astronomy students. They're up north. What are they studying and looking at when this is happening? So I wanted to send them up there because like when I was in graduate school, um, we saw the 2017 eclipse. My department chartered a bus. It was a life-changing experience, and I really just wanted the, my students to go up there and experience that. Um, it's just something that, as a human being, I think you should experience if you can, and that's really what I wanted for them. And hopefully will help with their research and their growth as students. I, I hope so, at least our motivation to really buckle down because this is beautiful. This is the universe telling us about itself. Yeah. So beautifully said. Thank you, Dr. Townsend. Guys, I'll send it back to you for now as we get ready to watch as much as we're going to see here at Siena College. Back to you. Stella, thank you very much. We're approaching totality in Fort Drum, and this is a, a live look. I believe we have a live look for you to see as they're approaching it at three right now, in fact. We're going to take a closer look right after this break. Back live for our special coverage of the Great American Eclipse, the darkest hour. We are in totality in places around New York now. Fort Drum in particular. Let's go back to meteorologist Reed Kisselbeck, who is there right now. Reed, did the skies clear up enough for you to see it? Dark. Unfortunately, Mark Sabrina, we actually got our thickest clouds right up to around totality, so we can't see the eclipse itself. But I'll tell you what, it is dark. It looks like we have an impressive sunset going on behind me, even though it's in the middle of the day. And I'll tell you a couple other things, too. I can hear the crickets going off right now. The mosquitoes are out. I'm getting bit a couple times here as well. And so certainly, even though we can't see it, its presence is certainly being felt out here and uh, certainly impactful. It's also gotten noticeably colder out here over the course of the past few minutes as we went from from just a little bit of some sunshine to totality in place. And uh, our totality here lasting for three minutes and 39 seconds. So certainly uh, right in the midst of it right now, it does feel like I'm doing a live shot in the middle of the night, guys. It's actually really cool. So even though I can't see it, I am still nerding out a little bit because, I mean, this doesn't happen every day for sure. So we'll send it back to you guys. Looks like total nighttime there. Reed, thank you very much. And let's take a live look at our other cameras as we speak. Upper left, Lake George. That's from uh, a boat on Lake George now. Over to the top right, that's Siena College looking pretty dark right now, hoping those clouds move out. Lower left side of your screen is a live look at the eclipse at Thatcher Park. And the bottom right, that's where we are standing right now. That's the roof of News Channel 13. We have a decent shot here right now, thankfully. So let's head further north now to Lake Placid. Let's go to Lake Placid and meteorologist Rachel Tede, who's standing by live in the Olympic Park there. Rachel, good afternoon. 
Hi, Mark and Sabrina. This is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I've covered a solar eclipse in 2017 where I was 98 uh, percent totality. That is nothing compared to what we're seeing right now. You put on the eclipse, uh, eclipse glasses and you cannot see a thing. So it is completely covered. There are some planets that we can see as well. Somebody in the crowd shouted uh, that down a little bit is Jupiter, but a very cool thing to see. But this is the most incredible thing that I've ever seen. Uh, coming off the sun a little bit. I don't know if you can tell in the shot, but there appears to be a little bit of an orange blip on the bottom right or bottom left part, I suppose. And people here around were saying they were hoping to be able to see some of the uh, uh, flares coming off of the sun when this moment happens. So I can't say for sure if that's what we're seeing here, but it's quite the stellar view. Just before totality, colors started to get a little bit wonky. The reds started to become um, a little bit not quite the right color. Greens were very, very vibrant. Um, and everybody had their cameras out. The moment it reached totality, everybody cheered, their hands went up, and uh, I don't want to move from our shot of the sun here, but off to our right is the Olympic Center, and they have special lights lit up right now. The Olympic rings are lit up, and everybody's in a very celebratory mood. Everybody has their cameras out, taking photos. An absolutely gorgeous view, Mark and Sabrina from Lake Placid. Absolutely incredible, Rachel. Wow, can't imagine what that's like in real life. And we'll bring you back live here to the roof, uh, the view that we have here from mm. the roof of News Channel 13. And we are in totality now. We've reached totality. We're beyond the peak of totality here now, but we're going to be all across the state as we have been all afternoon. We have a crew in Fort Drum, as we've told you. Yeah. We have a live look from the roof of our station here in Manance. And we're going to take another, give you another glimpse, kind of a snapshot across the board of where all of our live cameras are. And there we go. That top right, uh, left, excuse me, the top left, that's that uh, Fort Drum shot. And the bright orange shot in the middle on top is from the roof of our station here in Manance. The top right is Thatcher Park right now. And the... Oh, excuse me, Lake Placid, yes. Bottom left is Lake George, middle is Thatcher Park, and that's Sienna over on hey the Hey guys, I just want to point out here, Fort Drum and Lake George, see the little dot? That's Jupiter. You oh, can see oh, it very cool. because it's so dark in those shots. That's so you incredible. can see the planets. Normally, you can only see those at night, obviously. Our special live coverage of the darkest hour, the Great American Eclipse, continues. Welcome back to our special coverage of the total solar eclipse. And there it is as it starts to move out. That's a live shot from Maine. Right yeah, now. from Maine and Maine was forecast to be some of the best viewing because mm. of very little cloud cover there today. And that's a perfect shot. Another really good spot that we saw at least. And we have someone on the ground seeing it firsthand. Meteorologist Reed Kisselbeck. He's in Fort Drum about uh, 25 minutes outside Watertown. And he had a good view there. Uh, got dark for a while and felt a little strange, oh, did it not? It's daytime again there. I mean, it was dark here for sure, guys. I mean, you only talked to me, what, five minutes ago, and it's already getting brighter out here. So big, although it was brief, big impact on our region here. And actually, joining me right now is one of the turbulent eddies from Albany himself. We have Evan here. Evan and I, we've had many discussions throughout our times here. Uh, Evan, can you just talk about your experience with this one as just launching the balloons, but also what you just witnessed. Yeah, thanks so much. It was just uh, wicked cool. Uh, we saw a uh, temperature drop, which, you know, as expected, as the sun goes away, you're going to have that temperature drop, so that was really cool. And we're launching these balloons 24 hours before the eclipse, and then during, the uh, during totality, and then six hours after, and we want to try to see how our atmosphere is changing, how the temperature was going to change, how the relative humidity, the dew point, and uh, the wind speed, of course. So it's just a really cool experience and uh, very happy to be part of it. Yeah, very cool. I know you could tell the difference in the temperature just by staying here on the ground. So very cool, Evan. Thank yeah, you for that part, yeah. man. Still got some work to do. How many more launches you got, you say? Yeah, we have about four or five more. We're going to go through at 8 p.m. this evening, and uh, that'll be that because, you know, uh, we want to see, okay, we had the eclipse. What's going to happen after? How quick is the temperature going to rise back again? Thanks, so, Evan. I appreciate like it, that. buddy. Thanks, man. So we are going to definitely uh, come back and try to get ourselves a balloon launch in place, and for now, we'll send it back to you guys. Yeah, looking forward to seeing that. Reed, thank you very much.
Let's go live now to Thatcher Park in Albany County, and Dan Levy has a great spot to view it as long as weather is cooperating. Hey, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you said that very well, Mark, yeah. Uh, what I can tell you is that we are realizing, we are, are experiencing that the best laid plans of mice and meteorologists often like to play games with us. A lot of disappointment here. Uh, we've learned today that the gods of meteorology giveth and they taketh away and then they partially giveth back again. So uh, we are past totality here, which would have been 97%. Very difficult to see at that total point because it was very dark. You can see the people are, uh, well, they're still hanging in there behind me as you can tell, but, uh, you know, darkness came and went. Uh, the corona was not present. The fuzziness, well, it dissipated, and then it came back. So uh, there was partial joy in Eclipseville. Put it that way. Maybe not total joy, but I guess 97% joy with an asterisk. Um, the moon, it was in perfect alignment uh, between the sun and this part of the world. A once-in-a-lifetime event for so many of us, but... Uh, it was, uh, I, I guess, a, a celestial dancing with the stars, if you will. But uh, we missed a great part of the show. And uh, the temperature, by the way, has dipped noticeably. I just checked. It's actually 65 degrees here. It doesn't feel that way. Uh, but now the sunlight is uh, beginning to increase right now. The temperature seems to be going up. And uh, this eclipse came and went. And we'll wait 20 years for the next one, guys. In the making here in the capital region and the state of New York. Thank you very much. Let's take a quick check uh, of the roads as people might be trying to get on the road and, and head back home after this. So we'll start with the north way right near the Twin Bridges. That was really backed up a short time ago. Looks like it's cleared up now. Traffic moving again after a crash there. Meanwhile, uh, near exit 17 and 18 of the Northway, Queensbury, Moreau area, no problems there at all. Let's check out uh, exit 13 right near uh, 15, excuse me, right near Saratoga Springs. We're looking okay. It is 13. Okay. We're looking okay over there. And finally, a look at uh, exit 9 near 146, Clifton Park. No problems. Let us uh, check out our live camera in Lake George right now. And look at that, a beautiful shot. To meteorologist Juanique Martinez is literally in the water right now on a boat uh, with a cool vantage point there. We'll continue our live team coverage. Stay with us. To our special coverage as this uh, phenomenal event is starting to wind down. Totality no longer in Holton, Maine. Totality no longer in Fort Drum, New York. <laughs> Meteorologist Reed it's Kisselback very has, poetic been, of you. <laughs> he's, yes. he's been providing live reports all day and he joins us now once again. Hey, Reed. Hey, Mark. I feel like you should be writing like some poetry here. That was that was beautiful, man. Uh, so yeah, we are seeing conditions starting to get a little bit more bright in place outside here and now more so, this is what I'm thinking of when I look at this kind of cloud cover around me, is what I think of sometimes in the summer when we get a little bit closer to maybe right around a thunderstorm coming in. You get that dark cloud cover starting to push towards your area. Um, and so conditions are improving. We are going to be working on trying to get a, a shot here of the sun now because the cloud cover is starting to lighten up a little bit more. So hopefully you can see that before we toss it back to you. But right now, uh, the turbulent eddy is taking a little bit of a break. The next balloon launch is not until 418. And we will be there to bring you that one during our 4 o'clock newscast. So make sure you come on back and take a look at that here too. I also want to give a little bit of uh, some props here to the amazing photographer that I have over here, uh, Justin Shumway has been doing a great job trying to adjust all those camera settings to adjust for the changing conditions. So he's been doing great and uh, jumping back and forth between two cameras. So a little bit of some kudos to him. Uh, but, yeah, conditions starting to brighten up. I had mentioned the temperature dropped. It's already starting to warm up a little bit more. The crickets were out. The mosquitoes were out. They're now kind of going away again. So it's starting to return a little bit more back to normal. We'll send it back to you guys in the Bree, studio. This is uh, Paul out here on the roof. Uh, we noticed how dark it got here. We felt the cooler air when we came to you. It was pitch black where you were even though there was cloud cover and you mentioned the temperature drop how much would you estimate the temperature dropped off when you were in totality I mean did it feel like evening was upon us and we talk about one or two degrees or more like six or seven what do you think 
it felt like that five to ten degree difference, Paul. I'd say when you when you get more so, you know, when you, you go out right after sunset and all of a sudden you're you notice it's just cold out there. That's kind of what it felt like. It felt like a very quick drop, probably like I said, about five to ten. It, it was a noticeable drop. Reed yeah, Kesselbeck, felt it here. Thank you. All right, let's find out how it felt in Lake Placid. It's always cooler in Lake Placid, right? Let's go to meteorologist Rachel TD. Hey, Rachel. Hi, Mark and Sabrina. Yeah, you're talking about that 5 to 10 degree drop, but with Reed, we definitely felt that. I don't know if you remember, but earlier this afternoon, we were up at the Olympic Center. I was in a short sleeve shirt. I have now put back the sweatshirt on and put on the parka. So it's definitely feeling cooler, but already warmer than when we were in totality. The light is, it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but it's a little off. The colors aren't perfect. The shadows are a little bit uncanny valley right now. Uh, so as more and more sun is revealed, that of course will resolve itself. But I'll get out of the way here. People are starting to filter out of the gates here. Uh, hopefully the people who really darted out are trying to probably beat the traffic that is expected to be a bit brutal on the way home uh, to New Hampshire or New Jersey or down south uh, in New York, wherever home is for them. So people are filtering out slowly, but still a lot of people are still hanging on. The people waving are an Albany crew. Hi, Albany crew. <laughs> We've seen a lot of Albany people here and uh, Capital Region people here in Lake Placid here today. So some folks are still hanging hanging out here, enjoying the food trucks, enjoying what the Olympic Center has to offer, and uh, just celebrating just an amazing experience. For now, reporting live from Lake Placid with coverage you can trust, I'm Rachel Teedy. Back to you. All right, Rachel, thank you very much. What a great spot to be at for this. And let's take another live look at our uh, 360 eclipse camera. This is right next to us here on the roof of News Channel 13. Yeah, you're seeing us live if you tune into this on the News Channel 13 YouTube page or you can control it yourself at home or from your phone and you can look at the sky, you can look at the surroundings, you can do whatever you'd like and you can check it yourself by scanning the QR code that we're about to show you. So the closest we got to a totality happened about uh, 18 minutes ago now. Mm. Is my math right, Mark? I think it is. Okay, yes. for a change. So let's check in with Tessa <laughs> Ventulin who's not too far from us. She's uh, right next to the New York State Capitol in downtown Albany. Tessa, what was it like over there? All right, we're going to try to fix that shot in the meantime. There are big celebrations going on in Albany, on the Skyway, uh, all near the Capitol, on the plaza. And Tessa is checking in with a lot of people who have come from outside the area right. to enjoy it here Very in Albany. Very excited people. I think one of the things we should note, just you know, a, a quick recap of the last 15 to 20 minutes weather-wise, was that we had this deck of clouds coming. We had blue sky for a while. Yeah. I had come out when we were all down in the studio in the 3 o'clock hour, and it was totally visible. Then it went away for a little bit right before we got to peak intensity. And then we were all able to put on our glasses and experience yes. it through the high thin clouds. So a lot of us lucked out a now. bit and now the clouds are coming back. So uh, certainly an in and out uh, experience here in the Capitol District. We've been up here all afternoon. Obviously, we wanted to make sure the shot was, you know, set up and every equipment wise and it was beautiful and warm this early. It, yeah, it was ideal. Yeah, when we came up just before totality, we felt that temperature drop, but certainly. some bugs flying around and I'm the wind curious. Picked can, up. can you see it now? Can so you see it right the... now I can't and I think it's because as Paul was saying, those clouds have moved in. So there's yeah, some no, of the thicker, nothing visible right now. Some of the thicker high clouds have moved back in, but and that's how lucky we were, were was that they did thin out in time for us to see it right at 326, 327 when we were at the peak here in Menans, right where we stand. We saw uh, crowds leaving in Lake Placid where Rachel T.D. is. This has been big business for many of the states, the 15 states throughout the path. Yeah. Which New is York normally off season. Right, right, April in Lake Placid Lake is not a, not a busy time, but this is wonderful for those uh, those communities because the state of New York has even said, come for the eclipse, stay for New York. So they're hoping that the people who are at those watch parties are sticking around tonight. Well, yeah, or will come back because of what they experienced. Exactly. Right? Exactly. The, the, the they how, have how to great eat somewhere now, yeah, right? That's true. So. Exactly. Tessa Bentulin is live in Albany at uh, Capitol Park. Tessa, good afternoon. Hi, Mark and Sabrina. Yeah, sorry about that a little earlier. We're ready to go now here in downtown Albany, right in front of the Capitol. A lot of people have gone back to work or going home back in their cars now. They saw the totality that we have here in Albany, but still got some people behind us going back to work. You see still out here some stragglers. And if you look in the far distance there near the plaza there, we've got a lot of people coming down from there. A lot of people were super excited to see uh, the eclipse here. We've all been waiting for it for the past two weeks. We just hit uh, 
uh, its peak about 20 minutes ago or so here in the Albany area. And it was so cool because everyone was just kind of so excited to be outside with everybody. Even if you didn't know each other, you were just talking to each other, having fun, wearing the glasses, uh, just experiencing something that we won't see for another uh, almost hundreds of years. Um, so it is very cool that we all get to experience this together. Uh, and hopefully we can get a couple more people to talk to us about their experience as well. But for now, we're live here outside the state capitol. Uh, Mark, Sabrina, and Paul, back to you. Tessa Bintulin, thank you very much. And it's all about the photos, right? Of if, course. If there are no pics, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Apparently, we're going to have to just use our memory. So we are seeing a lot of your great pictures coming in. Steve Kuj is down in the studio going through many of the photos you've sent us. Steve, good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, hey, guys. You know, one of my favorite parts about the eclipse is not just going out for myself and looking at the magnificence of it, but seeing your photos, everything you guys are sending us. And my, have you guys been sending us some amazing photos? This right here, I believe this shot was from Granville at Fawn Center from one of our viewers. And look, even a couple of kids in Saratoga enjoying the amazing eclipse view with their special eclipse viewers. I think they're, they're on the swing set trying to get a little bit closer to the sun to check out the view from over there. Uh, here's another shot right here. This is Rensselaer County. Kenzie Blaisdell sent us this shot. And it's just so tiny. You got to remember, many people don't have huge zoom lenses like a professional television station would. This shot there, that was Schenectady from Cynthia Blonde. And back to Granville Fawn Center. So we're really seeing a bunch of different kinds of photos from you guys from around the capital region. And it's just great. You know, we want to see not just pictures, of course, of what the solar eclipse looked like from your angle, but we want to see you guys watching the eclipse. We know you've got tons of great video. Unfortunately, it wasn't such a great view for a lot of people. We've been seeing photos like this, folks, you know, stuck in traffic this morning, trying to get up to Lake Placid or, you know, wherever, to Lake George. That's another hot destination, as we saw our Estella Porter over there and um, Juanique Martinez. Uh, but yeah, people stuck in traffic all over the place. Um, this was uh, exit 22, the Northway, I-87 this morning. Folks just lining up, trying to get there. Uh, a few of the other shots were Route 9 south of Warrensburg and Route 91 in Vermont. So if you were trying to get to a place to watch the eclipse today, you really had to leave early this morning to avoid situations like this traffic. Um, our uh, Rachel Teedy, she's in Lake Placid, as you've been noticing. She left at 6 o'clock this morning, 6 in the morning, and they were hoping to get there by 12. They weren't sure what kind of traffic they were going to uh, entangle with. Thankfully, it was smooth sailing. Only took them about three, three and a half hours to get up to Lake Placid from down here in the Menans area. So hats off to them. They did it right. But yeah, a lot of other people uh, really discovering that, hey, <laughs> it wasn't just their idea to get up to a great spot. We're going to take a bump shot now over to Lake Placid to show you what it's looking like over there as well. Again, this one here, a shot uh, exit 22 on your way up to Lake George, just bumper to bumper traffic. Really something you're more used to seeing down in New York City or maybe even you know, if you've ever been out to Los Angeles, seeing traffic just stuck together like this. And again, everybody going to the same spot, trying to get a view of this once in a generation amazing eclipse shot. Of course, we are here. We are taking your pictures. We're taking your video. If you've got some shots on your camera, on your phone right now, uh, send them our way. Our web department is on standby looking to see what you guys are going to send us because, again, as I mentioned, one of the coolest parts about these eclipses for us here at News Channel 13 is just seeing what this experience is like from your perspective at home, from your backyard, from your office window, from wherever you may be. So please, you guys, uh, you're watching right now. You say, hey, I got this shot. I don't know if I want to send it. Yeah, no, send it to us. We'll tell, let you know if it's good or not. Um, you know, we're all outside enjoying this amazing thing together with our glasses. So. Let's now send it back up to the rooftop where our favorite people, <laughs> Mark and Sabrina, are. Hey, guys, how's the view currently? Yeah, uh, Steve, it looks great. You look great, yeah. too. I Thank think you. I think, <laughs> I'm thinking Very Devo nice. is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Devo, whip it good, right? <laughs> right. Right now, we have a decent amount of cloud cover, so can't see too much, but uh, we're going to keep taking a look. But hey, can't beat that shot right yeah, there. Shot. And that's a live look in Lake Placid as our coverage continues. back live with our special coverage of the eclipse, the great American eclipse of 2024. And we're taking a closer look at all of our traffic cameras, maybe to see if people are now trying to get out of where they were and get home and traffic is built building as we look at this live picture of the Northway right in Queensbury. Next shot is uh, Route 9 near alternate Route alternate 7. Route 7, 7, right? Yeah, it's 787. Busy spot. Busy spot and uh, particularly 
busy at this hour. And this is a Route 7 area right near Latham, and it's looking okay over there right now. Back north to Saratoga County, Northway exit 13, and traffic appears to be building from our last half hour. Let's check in with meteorologist Juanique Martinez one more time. She's in Lake George. She's on Lake George. Hey, Juanique. Hey guys, yeah, I want to notice, um, I want to actually mention that noticeable temperature drop that you all mentioned. I had to put my hat on because it was so chilly out here, out on the open lake, and you usually get lake effect winds, but we also felt that shift in those winds in the glass, um, or rather the, the lake here was like glass on Lake George, so it was a very eerie scene. It wasn't like day or night. It was nothing like anything I've ever seen before, so it was a very, very cool experience in the partial path of totality. Back to you guys. All right, Juanique, thank you very much. Wow, she had to put the hat on. Yeah, <laughs> chilly. Chilly. Got a little cool. Did it get cool at Siena College? Let's find out from Stella Porter. Hey, Stella. She's always cool, though. <laughs> Hi, Mark and Sabrina. <laughs> Thank you, Sabrina. It was chilly here. In fact, I've, I've had my coat off for a few minutes because the sun was beating down before, and then we noticed almost like a twilight chill come over here, and there were tons of students out on the quad watching. We spoke to a few of them uh, just observing this, and many of them said they didn't actually get to see the 2017 eclipse, so they were happy to have the opportunity. We still got some music out here. Community members came out. This seemed like a, a central uh, exciting place to come. We've got a kid um, announcing for us a little scavenger hunt that's going on right now. So lots of people converging here. Let's uh, take a listen to a student that we spoke to explaining how exciting this was this afternoon. I'm looking forward to seeing the eclipse. I've never seen it before. I don't really know much about it, but there's a lot of events going on for us to learn more about it and experience it with everyone here. It's a big talk. Everybody's like canceling classes, coming out, everyone's here, so it's really exciting. Chloe left. Just talked to some students who said the upside of today was seeing the eclipse, but also getting to get out of class. Now, a lot of them are headed back to class this afternoon. So for now, guys, I'll send it back to you as we come out of this solar eclipse and start to see the sun again at Siena College. Stella Porter, thank you very much. Back to class. <laughs> you know what I loved, though, in, in Stella's coverage? If you could listen closely in the background, they were playing some great tunes. Yes. Blinded by the Light by like E.L. That, one. <laughs> that was a Black good... Hole Sun. Oh, did you hear that one? Yeah. yeah if, we, we should talk about that. Our total Eclipse of the Heart. Come on. The heart. Here comes the sun. They're, comes the they're sun, just, huh? just I'm sure someone... Dan Levy yes. has some ideas for songs. <laughs> Let's check in with Dan right now. Once again at Thatcher Park in Voorheesville. Dan, first, how's it feeling over there right now? I feel like I should have a microphone in my hand, yeah. <laughs> okay, I have a little reverb here, so let me take these out. Uh, you were talking about songs. Yeah, I was obviously thinking about flying my Learjet up to Nova Scotia to see a total eclipse of this sun. Tell you what, what we saw here in Thatcher Park in the Helderberg Escarpment was uh, less than total satisfaction um, for this total eclipse. Uh, the cloud cover just rolled in just before uh, total darkness was supposed to set here. Uh, take a look at the field. This field was filled with uh, uh, eclipse watchers uh, not too long ago. Most of them have packed up and gone home already, although there's a couple of uh, kids playing on the lawn. They're playing football. Um, the moment of maximum darkness was very fuzzy, and in speaking with uh, children and adults, uh, there was quite a bit of disappointment here today, uh, but it was a thrill. That's what they were telling me. They were glad they were here, and now they just have to wait another 20 years before they have a chance to see this again. And uh, let me put this in, in case uh, I need to hear you. And that's kind of a wrap from Thatcher Park. I can see the parking lot over here at, at the Overlook was uh, filled a little while ago. It's just about emptied out. And so that's a wrap from Thatcher Park. And Dan, the song you referenced was You're So Vain by Carly Simon, right? I'm not sure you can hear me. Oh, you're, you got it. You got it. <laughs> well done. Dan Levy, we'll see you live at four. All right, Dan, thank you very much. Just taking one final look here from our roof in Manans and just a kind of a little bit of a blurry a little fuzz half moon situation shape, at least over there. So we had uh, incredible coverage leading up to this day. In case you missed it, News Channel 13 presented our one hour special on the eclipse. It was called the darkest hour. The entire team came together to bring you extensive coverage of this phenomenon. You can catch our stories about uh, what to expect, how to prepare and where to go if you want to look back at
get them and how to make uh, the most of the highly anticipated event that was all in advance of today's solar eclipse. Yeah, it was really well done. Head to our website, WNYT.com, and take a look if you haven't yet. What a cool day. Yeah, it turned out awesome, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Mother Nature always plays a role, so we have to tap dance around that a little sure. bit, but I think most of us got to see some form of the eclipse here in the capital region. I, the science that I love the most is the stat that you gave earlier, that it's the moon is so much smaller than the sun, so how does it block out the sun? Right. Well, it's because the moon is 400 times closer right. than the sun, and I love that. That's, the, so that's what I'll remember. That's how science. it lines up. <laughs> I, I'll remember seeing Jupiter in our live picture. That yeah, was very that was cool. That was remarkable, cool, yeah. Wow. It's just like night Time. Our coverage will continue as News Channel 13 continues on Live at 4. Live at 4 is next. Stay with then. us.